Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Machining with Joe. So today I sort of want to summarise all the parts that we've done on this quick change tool post, mount it on the lathe and basically tidy up any loose sort of ends. By the end of this video we will be making chips using the quick change tool post, so stay tuned if you're really excited for that, I know I am. First time this thing's going to make some chips so it's going to be really cool to see it in action. But for now, let's head over to the lathe, get this thing mounted and just go over all the parts we've built so far to get this to where it is now. Over on the lathe then and I've already removed the old tool post body that was on there. All that we've got left really is an M12 stud sticking up from the compound slide. So I'm going to fit the new tool post body that I've machined straight over that stud and this is where we can start to assemble things and get things looking like a tool post again. So we've got the cam locking function here, that just slides in there, a locking bolt to lock all this down so it's not going to go anywhere and finally as part of this setup we've got the locking piston. So that's the quick change tool post all pretty much there other than the fact that we've also got tool holders which will slide on this like so. That right there is the setup but I just need to tidy this up and get this sort of functional. So currently although by swivelling this you can lock the holder I need some kind of handle on here that comes out so I can knock it round and fully lock that. So I think that's the first little job we're going to get done today to tidy this up. I've sort of, with it mounted, I can decide roughly where the handle's going to go and we need to take this over to the mill to drill and tap this to accept an M8 thread. On the mill then, I've got the eccentric shaft here blocked up in what would probably appear on camera to be a really sketchy operation. But I'm hoping because of the tool pressure being so low on this, it should be okay. So what I've done is I've mounted the eccentric shaft at a sort of eyeball 20 degree angle. Basically how I've done that is just sort of check the bottom of the end mill is parallel to the surface of this. And what I want to get done is machine a flat on here, just a small flat and then I need to drill this out to accept an M8 thread. So drilling it out to a 6.8 millimeter shouldn't be too difficult as long as I go up in slow increments and yeah, like I said, keep that tool pressure to a minimum. With the offset hole now drilled and tapped and a sort of counter bore put on here, I can now begin to make the handle. So, lucky enough I've got this off cut of 12L14, which I think once it's got the threads on there and that little ball ended handle, it's going to be quite a nice length. So, I've not really got much work to do to this. I'm going to chop off this already machined bit here and then take both ends down to accept an M8 die. Once that's done we can head over, wind that into there and sort of see the length and how this thing actually functions. Over to the mini lathe now, something which you guys probably haven't seen in quite a few videos now but I feel like it was only fair on this old beast that this puts in a little bit of work towards the tool post as well because so far all the machines around the workshop have had a good valid input so with the tool post over on the Harrison M300 I thought what better time to use the mini lathe to make the handle. 
So I'm taking this 12L14 down now from 12 millimeters, which it is currently, down to just under 8 mil. And I need to do that across a 10 mil section. So, as in tradition, in old Walco WM180 terms, I'm gonna face this part off and start to turn it down. Wow, using these small hand wheels feels completely different compared to the uh, Harrison M300. Doo -doo -doo. Based off. Now let's touch off on the work. Touch off there. Zero out my X. And zero out the Y. Oh, I've got to remember this lathe can only do small cuts. So I'm probably going to start with a. What should we go with? Let's go with a 0.25mm depth of cut and see how we get on with that. It's funny using this lit, little old lathe. It's been quite a while since I've been on it. And 10 mil there. That went up quite easy, so let's do a 0.5mm depth of cut this time, double the depth of cut. It's the only problem with not using a lathe for so long, I forget what it's capable of. So look at the two mil on the DRO. Once we get to that sort of point, I'll take some uh, take some measurements. So this final one now is going to be 2 mil depth of cut, which is 4 mil overall, so that should bring us close to final diameter. And shoulder that off while we're there. Not a bad little finish on that part. Nice. So, oh, we're still a smidge over. It's 8.1 mil that, so to make this nice and easy, I need to undersize that a little bit. So, let's go 2.1. That's better. Right, I'm going to chamfer this now, put a shoulder on it, and then that will let us be able to run the die down it. Get this brass swarf off. Just put a very light chamfer on there. Whoa, hey! Handles on there. And all seems to lock into place 
really nice. So I'm gonna quickly pop away, put a M8 thread on here with a little plastic ball on, and I think when we'll come back, we'll stick a tool holder in here, level it all up, and make the first chips from our quick change tool post. So, really excited about that. That's gonna be awesome. Right, you are then. The handle is all done. So we screw that in there. Pretty basic, I've got an M8 thread this side, M10 thread up here, and I've just milled some flat slots so I can do this out of a spanner. So that's just a 10 mil spanner there. Nice. And final feature, screw a ball on the end. Oh, done. All right, let's get a tool in here. So, what have I got up here? Got a WNMG tool. Let's stick this in here. Uh, so, do, do, do. get some Allen keys. Right. Nice, that fits in there nice. All right, snuggle these up. Before I do any cuts with this as well, I need to set the centre height for this tool. So that's done on this little adjustment screw down here. All right, they're nice and tight. Oh. See how far off we are from centre height. Oh, we're actually pretty close. Pretty close indeed. So, actually, we're that close. I think I'm going to do a um, do a test cut with this and see how we're sitting. So, I think for our first sort of test cuts, then I'm going to use just a block of mild steel, minimal stick out. <sighs> And we'll just see how this thing faces it off. See if I've got to adjust the tool height anymore. So first bit of facing then with a quick change tool post. Let's give this a go. See how that centre height is. Well, it hasn't left a little nubbin in the middle there. So, the centre height's got to be pretty close. Well, I think next test we're going to do now is pull this bit of steel out. Actually, I might get another bit, actually. It's a bit longer. And we'll do a few little test cuts just to see what this tool post is capable of in terms of rigidity and chatter. So, we've got this random piece of mild steel stock in here. It's normally terrible to machine with but it'd be a good little test to see what our quick change tool post is capable of. So just touched off on the work there. There should be no problem for this lathe, so I'm going to start off with a one millimetre depth of cut. And this is all going to be done under power feed. So, that's not an overall bad finish on that, for a 1mm depth of cut. Didn't seem to have any problems from the tool holder itself. All seemed to stay pretty good, so, so far so good. I think the next thing to do now is just step up the depths of cut in increments, just to see what we can get away with. So, if I can get to sort of a 2.5, 3mm depth of cut with this thing, I'll be really happy. I can start mass producing some holders and get this thing underway. So, let's do this. Should we go straight to two? 
Let's jump to 1.5 millimeter depth of cutter first. Yeah, 1.5 millimeter depth of cut seems to have no issues. So now I'm going to try a 2 millimeter depth of cut. Let's see how this goes. Right, two millimeters. Fingers crossed, seems to be flying through that. The chips might be a little bit hot actually looking at them. So if we're gonna to get to this sort of depth of cut, we're gonna to have to start thinking about cooling, I think. Because those chips, as nice as they are, they're a really blue colour, so getting really hot. Surface finish is pretty good though. Feeling hot, hot, hot. There are some blue hot chips. Be nice for a bit of salt and vinegar. Well, I've got to say, so far, I'm really happy with this quick change tool post. It's turned out better than I can imagine, I'd say. Um, so it's doing two millimeter depths of cut quite well. Doesn't seem to be picking up any chatter, which is brilliant. That was one of the main things I was concerned about on this lathe is because it's just a dovetail with a locking piston although there's videos on YouTube of people doing this on mini lathes I wasn't entirely sure how this was going to go on a big lathe like this so so far it seems really good like don't get me wrong I don't think I'm going to be able to do the depths of cut I could do on the old style tool post because that thing was like a brick it was rigid as hell this on the other hand yeah, two millimeter depth of cut seemed to be no problem. I think I'm gonna be able to push it a little bit more, but going off the color of those chips for this type of steel that I've got in the lathe right now, gonna need some kind of coolant or oil, something like that. But for now, I'm happy with that. I think then that about sums up this series of videos. I might still do a video on a different type of locking mechanism to basically bolt this to the top slide or to the compound rest sorry at the minute I just quickly bash something together with some slots so I could tighten this up it's not the nicest of things ideally I'd like something with a handle like this maybe offset over this way so when I tighten this up I can just knock a few handles around I'll think about that over the next week and likelihood is I probably will do it so this isn't the last you've seen of the quick change tool post it's probably going to be another video to come. But for now, that's this video all summarised. Any questions, guys, of how I've done this, any processes that you're not too sure on, drop me a comment below and I'll try helping you best I can. For now, though, go back, watch the rest of this video series, give it a like and thumbs up. And for now, that's it, guys. See you next week. Have a good week. Happy machining. Whee!